Hi and welcome to another episode of Bloomfield Buzz TV. Each episode we try to inform you about what's going on right here in Bloomfield. In this episode of Bloomfield Buzz, history is made in Bloomfield with the swearing in of new council members, the mayor's outlook on 2012, Bloomfield celebrates Dr. Martin Luther King Day, and we learn about the launch of Bloomfield's bicentennial website as the township celebrates its 200th birthday this year. But first, our cameras were on hand recently when the footbridge over JFK Parkway underwent an artistic transformation. Students from Bloomfield College painted a mural and our own cameraman Rick Gearhart followed the action over the course of a few days. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Professor Clark Steckley at Bloomfield College in the CAT department. And today my painting students are painting a mural. It's gonna say Power of Diversity with uh, trees with all the different flags of the nations in the world. And um, right now they're painting the background and shortly after they get done with that, we will start painting the tree. And then after that, we'll paint the words. We have a problem around town, like every other town has, in having graffiti on our on our on our walls, on our sidewalks, and things like that. So we took a, pro a positive approach and said, "Let's reach out." So what Yoshi Minali did was he sent out an email along the, uh, with some information that we of where we wanted to have it done to the to the art community. Bloomfield College, the high school, the art league, and a couple of other places, and they responded. Uh, Art State uh, Clark was one of the first to respond, and we're here today as they finish up. There's a lot of kids that are involved in this. It's a great project. Again, it shows Bluefield. We always say this: Bluefield is, is is the melting pot of the United States. We're we're a community that has a huge amount of diversity, and and this is what what it shows. As you can see by some of the some of the paintings on the wall. What they are are leaves, but they have flags, flags of all the different countries that, that our, our residents come from. So we're very proud of this. We're very happy that, you know, it's a, it's a project that costs virtually nothing. And it's a great thing for the community. And most of all, we, we like the fact that, you know, the kids from Bloomfield College and, and the high school got involved. They did it on their own time. They're not getting paid for this. They're not even getting credit for their, for their classes. They're just coming out, being great residents, great students, but most of all, kids with big hearts who are working hard for us. So, hope you enjoy it when you drive by. Think about it. A lot of kids doing a lot of work for Bloomfield. Thanks a lot. Have you ever missed an airing of a show on WBMA-TV? Visit our website and click on our programming guide for days and times when shows air. You can also watch all of our original programming on our video on demand player by going to our website at WBMATV.com and clicking on our Media Center page. Most of our new programming is available now in high definition. Plus, our new player is now iPhone, iTouch, and iPad friendly. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, friend us on Facebook, and watch our YouTube channel as well. Now let's switch gears as Bloomfield Township Council undergoes two historic moments this year. Carlos Bernard, Councilman of the Third Ward, 
was the first Latino elected to the Township Council, and Eli Chalet, Councilman of the First Ward, was the first foreign-born resident elected. In addition, Second Ward Councilman Nick Joanno was sworn in again for his second term. Let's take a look at some of the clips from their swearing in. First of all, I want everyone to know what a pleasure uh, it is to be here, especially for this young man, uh, who has accomplished a, a lot uh, in terms of his family and community, and he's finally been uh, approved by the, by his, uh, the people of, uh, of this community to be our council person. Let's give him another round of applause. Nick, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Eli and I met each other a few years ago, am I correct? Probably around 1980, 81, something like that. Uh, we were, we were uh, congregating on the corner of Mon uh, Montgomery and Bluefield and Belleville Avenue at that time, where your family lived. Whoever would dream that both of us would be in office, what a mistake that people have made. <laughs> oh my God. But no, I'm, I'm extremely proud uh, to have your friendship, and it's really an honor to uh, swear you in. Repeat after me. I, I who solemnly swear, who solemnly swear that, I that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and, and I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state, under the authority of the people. So help me God. Congratulations. While they uh, are gathering here, let me also take this opportunity as your state senator to wish all of you a very happy and prosperous New Year with great health for everyone. Let me also congratulate those who were recently elected and let me also um, let all of you know that we, those of us in the 20th legislative district, and I'm speaking now of Assemblyman Ralph Caputo, Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker, are very thankful to you for the support, the prayers, and the votes you have given us over the years that we have served you in the most recent election. And we can assure you we're going to retain our collective independence on behalf of the people we represent and do the best we can to work with everyone, not just those who are our constituents, but the leadership of this great township as well. I also want to say to Simon uh, Caputo, that uh, the county clerk and our mayor was sitting there and I understand that he and Councilman Gillette had congregated on the corners someplace and we were thinking that's called loitering. <laughs> and I'm glad that we have changed those laws and you don't allow loitering here in the township. Well, uh, oh, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I do want to um, say thank you to the members, the residents of the second district for the work you did and the family behind Nick Joano to re-elect him as council person. There were those, as the history books were right, that thought that he would not be returned and I told Nick that as long as he maintained the ability to work with everybody and never compromise principle, in government, we have to compromise. But the one thing as leaders we can never do is compromise principle. He represents a constituency as does every other council person here. And so Nick, there are gonna be times that you agree and disagree, but make sure that you're doing the best interest of the people you represent. They depend on you, that's why they returned you, even off the party line. But don't never compromise your principles and I'll stand behind you if you retain um, the kinds of leadership you've retained over the past. Now, I see the little one want me to swear you in because you keep reaching for the papers, okay? So with that, I want you to, after the word I, just put your name, okay? Um, I, Nicholas Gilletto, 
to solemnly swear, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the government established in the United States and in this state, and in this state under the authority of the people. And under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations to your councilman for your re-election. <laughs> Good afternoon. Happy New Year. I would like to congratulate Nick Joano and Elias Chalet on their uh, election victories. Um, your mayor just uh, performed a wedding ceremony. And three days ago, uh, I was down in my office in the Hall of Records in Newark, and a young couple from Bloomfield came into my office. And uh, before I performed the wedding ceremony, we sat down and spoke uh, about them and about their lives. And the bride talked about how her grandparents uh, came from Italy, immigrated from Italy, and came through Ellis Island uh, on a boat, and as they stepped off the boat, they were greeted by a family friend who transported them to Bloomfield, where they would spend the rest of their lives and raise their family. And the first place they came, when they came to Bloomfield, was this town hall. And they walked up the steps in front of the town hall and walked in. They were greeted by smiling faces. They were seeking help and guidance, and they got that from the employees at Bloomfield Town Hall. And, um, you know, Carlos uh, being here today and, and, you know, seeing his smiling face and his welcoming nature uh, just excites me. And Carlos is not only smart and talented and personable, but he is passionate about his beloved township of Bloomfield. And I guess, I guess his best quality is that of his loyalty uh, Carlos is loyal to his friends and his family, and I guess the greatest thing I can say about Carlos is that I want Carlos Bernard on my lifeboat. Uh, and just to finish up that story, when they told me about the story of them coming uh, to Bloomfield, I offered to come to Bloomfield Town Hall to perform that ceremony on the steps of Bloomfield Town Hall this past Friday. It was 50 degrees, it was a beautiful day, so it was a glorious wedding ceremony as your mayor just performed one uh, on New Year's, New Year's Day after New Year's Day, right? Today. Um, so let us make this official. Okay. I state your name. Carlos Bernard. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in this state under the authority of the people. So help me God. Congratulations. At that same ceremony, Mayor Raymond McCarthy laid out his state of the township plans for Bloomfield. Let's roll the videotape and listen to a portion of that speech. The other issue I spoke of was the ensuing redevelopment that was to take place in the downtown. That has happened. DCUR has already begun the demolishing and the entire block has been raised. We now await the construction to begin and for the future of Bloomfield to continue to be bright. We also have a second development project in the process at 225 Belleville Avenue. 
This project is another reflection of the continued development of Bloomfield. What was once an eyesore is now in the process of being demolished in order to make way for a new residential complex. <coughs> it will serve our residents and help bring new residents into our great town. It will also bring in an additional $600,000 to the tax rolls, unlike what those few skeptics say will be no taxes. There are three other developments that will make their way onto the scene in the coming year. With them, and the first two, Bloomfield will take the lead in development throughout the entire county of Essex. These developments will come, but have been made a reality due to the hard work of Glenn Dominic. The mayor and council gave him the task of going forward and negotiating with the developers, and he came through and produced great results. Thanks, Glenn. We also realized that if we were to work within the cap that has been imposed on us, on all municipalities in New Jersey, we wanted someone who could take the helm and do the job that was needed. We chose a new township administrator in Yoshi Manel. He's a person who has the intelligence and wherewithal to do the job. From his first council meeting, he knew his hands were filled. But he made the determination that what we need was sound decisions based upon an economic reality that times are hard and pragmatism was the object of the day. He stood up under personal attack and ridicule from some of the public who for no other reason than he was the new guy on the block. He stood his ground and has done the right thing for this community every day since his first. When we return, Bloomfield's 200th birthday celebration will get underway and we will celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. But before we take a break, let me leave you with a picture of a location right here in Bloomfield, and let's see if you know where in Bloomfield it is. Cotton balls. Duct tape. Spoon. Needle, thread, scalpel. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. So, you're looking for help with your mortgage. Worried about foreclosure? Mm. Messy stuff. We're a mortgage rescue company. We can help you keep your house. All we ask for in return is that you submit to our plans for galactic domination. <laughs> We're not so different, you and I. Yeah, this is not what we... Have you met my henchman, Radu? Nice to meet you. Radu. We're just gonna... We'll see you later. If you're facing foreclosure, make sure you're talking to the right people. Speak with HUD-approved housing counselors free of charge at 888-995-HOPE. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Today is a special day. Today we gather as a nation and as an international community to recognize the selfless decision of one of the most influential women of our time. She's been recognized by religious figures and politicians around the world. To us, she's just Rachel. But to the rest of the world, she's the woman who, after having one too many drinks, chose not 
to drive home buzzed. Here today to honor Rachel is the family whose lives she spared. WBMA-TV is a proud winner of the 2010 Jam Video Awards for Video Excellence, Bloomfield Buzz TV, and Unlimited, as well as an Outstanding Video Award for To Your Health Bloomfield, Saturday Night at the Movies, and A Taste of Bloomfield. Be sure to tune in. Your life, your town, your station. WBMA-TV. Welcome back to Bloomfield Buzz TV. Did you come up with the answer to our Where in Bloomfield picture? Well, here it is, the answer, along with the full revealing picture. Did you guess the Senorita's Mexican Grill on Glenwood Avenue? Well, if you did, you would have been this week's winner. Make sure you tune in Monday through Friday between 5 and 9 a.m. and again between 4 and 7 p.m. to look for our Where in Bloomfield trivia picture, along with news, weather, traffic reports, and more. WBMA-TV is your source for everything Bloomfield. WBMA-TV was there when township officials and residents were on hand for the First Light Baptist Church to celebrate the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Here are some highlights of that celebration ceremony. You might not have a title, but you have a role to play. Yeah. Every dignitary has a role to play. You are a dignitary. Yeah. That's what Dr. King wanted to make sure that everyone had a chance. If no one ever said you're not a dignitary, I'm telling you the untruth. Everyone in God's eyes is a dignitary. Right. Thank you for I happen to be, uh, I call the bridge generation, and I'll be very brief. I'm old enough to appreciate where we've come from and to also recognize that there's a disconnect in, in both my generation and in our children's generation between what Dr. King tried to achieve and what I see some of, in particular, I don't mean to pick on you, I love you, our young people. Um, there's a disconnect, whereas they stood for dignity, they stood for uh, getting education, they stood for being respected for the content of the character. Every time I see, let me get to the point, a young male or a young female who doesn't have the self-respect to pull up their pants. <laughs> to call one another by respectful names. To love one another, to not settle every argument with a gun. Th those things grieve me and I realize that there's a disconnect and the only way the disconnect is ratified, the only way it's fixed is if us that are of age tell of the struggles that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. yes. Tell of where, how, yeah. not more than 40 years ago we, we had the Dr. King assassinated. It's not that long ago. I said to my kids, my children just a little while ago, it's not so long ago. I'm born in 1965. King was assassinated and Kennedy was assassinated in 1968. Now, I, don't, I don't hope I don't look like a very old man. <laughs> so it's not old or ancient history as some who are born into the privilege that we can now share in a diversified Bloomfield, where I hear that in, the, in Forest Hills Apartments, not too long ago, we couldn't live there. Not too long ago, uh, there were difficulties for African Americans right in this community and across the nation. I'm not singling out Bloomfield. So it's not so long ago. So I say to my children, to every young person in particular, take advantage of what he prayed for, take advantage of what he lived for, take advantage of what he died for, get yourself educated, respect yourself, respect every man, and, and respect the dream and, and carry it in your bosom and, and tell your children. Finally, let's turn our attention to Bloomfield Township's 200th birthday celebration. Director of Recreation and Township Liaison to the Bicentennial Committee, Mike Skirman stopped by the WBMA-TV studios to tell us about the launch of the new website and some of the activities. 
the Bicentennial Committee uh, has been put in charge of running uh, events for our township throughout the year. On Friday, March 23rd, 2012 at Bloomfield High School, we will be uh, reenacting Bloomfield's original charter. Uh, we have uh, many dedicated volunteers and, and, and participants that are going to be involved in that particular event. Uh, we're also going to unveil uh, General Joseph Bloomfield, who is going to be um, a character and a, uh, a person that we're going to have at all our events uh, throughout the year. Um, we're very fortunate enough to have uh, many volunteers, um, sponsors, business, the whole entire town, the mayor and council are behind all of these activities and we're looking forward uh, to that kickoff event. It should be a special one and we'd like to invite everyone uh, in the township to, uh, to come together and come to these events, especially our kickoff. Uh, we feel as though it'll be a great opportunity for our community to get together um, and celebrate our rich history. The Bloomfield Recreation Department and the Township of Bloomfield uh, are also um, going to be running our traditional Memorial Day Parade uh, on Memorial Day Monday, May 28th. We will be parading from Brookside Park, uh, traveling south on Broad Street to the Green. We will have uh, marching bands, music. Uh, we're really trying to get the community involved this year, so we've spoken to many of the different athletic teams, uh, sporting events, some of the uh, cultural committees that we have, many of the organizations, the nonprofits. Non we're trying to make this parade one of the biggest and the best that Bloomfield has ever seen. So again, if you're around Memorial Day weekend, we would love for you uh, to come out and celebrate uh, Memorial Day and pay, uh, pay homage to our, uh, to our veterans and all who served um, in the armed forces. I'm extremely excited uh, being the recreation uh, director and uh, putting on the 4th of July uh, celebration. Uh, this year we will be having 4th of July on Wednesday, July 4th, 2012. We'll be hosting it at the newly uh, renovated Foley Field slash Memorial uh, Park uh, on that date. We're excited to have 4th of July back. We will have a summer uh, concert. We will have live music there. We will have vendors. We will also have um, a fantastic firework display, which Bloomfield has been known for uh, in the past, and we want to continue in that tradition. We also have a few tricks up our sleeve for uh, a grand finale to, uh, to commemorate uh, our 2012 uh, bicentennial. The Bloomfield Recreation Department and the Bloomfield Bicentennial Committee will be presenting uh, several concerts uh, throughout the year, starting on uh, Sunday, April 29th at the Bloomfield Middle School. Our Bloomfield Federation of Music will be putting on a concert uh, to commemorate uh, the 200th anniversary uh, of the incorporation of Bloomfield. Uh, we will also be having uh, our normal traditional concerts on the green. Uh, this year we are going to be bringing some concerts uh, to Bloomfield High School Auditorium. Uh, the high school auditorium has just been uh, refurbished. It's a beautiful venue, so we're going to have uh, some of our concerts inside. Uh, we'll be having some of them on the green, and we will also be having our traditional summer concert series at Brookside Park. Uh, these events take place uh, starting towards the end of June, and they will run throughout July. Our Music Federation concerts will be on Monday, and our traditional summer concert series will be on Tuesday nights. Uh, for a full list of events, you could check out the Bloomfield Recreation Department's website at www.bloomfieldrecreation.org or you could check out the Bloomfield Bicentennial website at www.bloomfieldbicentennial.com. Make sure you tune into WBMA-TV on a regular basis for all things Bloomfield. We are located on Channel 35 Comcast and Channel 30 Verizon Files. Visit us on our website at wbmatv.com for more information, programming schedule, live streaming video of our station, along with high-definition video on our on-demand section. Plus, you can follow WBMA-TV on Facebook, Twitter, and now we can be viewed on Roku by adding the PEG.TV channel. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Bloomfield Buzz. Join us again next time as we continue to explore Bloomfield and find out what's happening in your community. Thank you.